Hello there, so today I'm going to be talking about how I went from this to this in the period of four years. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, oh, I don't want to wait four years, great, this isn't going to be helpful whatsoever. But the thing is, I went from this to this without any art lessons, uh, without any watching any tutorials, I didn't learn any colour theory, I didn't learn any sort of art fundamentals. I didn't even have art high school classes because I was homeschooled. I learned the hard way because I wasn't sort of learning things properly. So it took me longer than it would someone that's learning it the right way. Um, and I'm just gonna be talking about things that I wish I had been told and tips that really have helped me improve over that period of time. So no, you don't need four years to get better at art. Today I'm gonna to be talking about things that will help you improve much quicker. So first of all, um, I want to talk about colour theory, especially if you are a painter. Understanding colour theory is incredibly important. Um, I was someone that would just mix a bunch of colours together to try and get the shade I wanted without any sort of knowledge as to how to get there. Everything I did would basically turn out brown or green or grey. So I highly recommend getting a colour theory book like this. What initially attracted me to it, and um, this is by William F. Powell, it's called Colour Mixing Recipes, is um, when I saw it in Hobby Lobby, I noticed that it had kind of swatches like this, and basically it tells you the formula to get to those particular colours. And as great as that is, it's nice to be able to do it by yourself without having to look at a book, so that's why it's very important that right at the start of this book, it teaches you colour theory. I won't go into it too much because this book is fantastic, it explains it much better than I ever would, but it basically tells you about how you change a colour. So you go in from red, if you add white to it, it changes the tint of the colour. If you add grey, it changes the tone. And if you add black, it changes the shade. It shows you all about the colour wheel, um, complementary colours, primary colours, how to mix them. Something I wish I had known many years ago, instead of learning myself, was that it's much easier to darken a colour than to lighten it. When you have, say, a red colour and you want it darker and you add black to it, and then it gets too black, if you add white to it, sure, it lightens it up, you need a lot of white paint and it gets rid of the vibrancy of that colour. And that's actually not the best way to darken or, like, um, kind of desaturate, is that the right word? The colour. That's why it's so important to learn colour theory. If you look at the colour wheel, you'll notice that red um, is opposite green, and that means they are complementary colours. So if you want to make red a darker colour, you add some green to it, and it makes it more dim. And it's just a great way to get those more realistic colours, and it's better to do that than to add black. And a website I found that was really, really helpful was goldenpaints.com. I'll leave the exact link down below. But they have a virtual colour mixer, so you can have different paint swatches, and you can mix them together to see what kind of colour it creates. So you're not actually wasting any paint if you're trying to figure out what colours make what colours. You can use the virtual paint mixer. Now the next piece of advice I can give you to improve your art is to stick with it. For me, I find that I erase so much and go back and forth. This, for example, this took me 19 hours, but throughout the process it's a lot of going back and forth, erasing, more, adding more strokes, and then you realise the proportions are off so you've got to erase some more. One of the biggest issues that a lot of artists I see uh, face is that they don't finish their work. They either quit too soon or don't like the way it's looking so they rush it to the end and think this is terrible, that's it, I'm done. And it's important to understand that you are never going to get any better if you keep giving up too soon. Art, as I say, art takes a lot of time. It takes hours and hours and hours and if you're not willing to put in those hours, you aren't going to get any better. No matter how bad you may think it's looking throughout the process, stick with it. Stick with it. It's always a way to fix things, always a way to change things. But years ago, I used to leave my work half finished because I was afraid of messing it up. And I never improved until I pushed myself to finish pieces. Okay, now, in regards to proportions, the proportions on this are way off, whereas this, the proportions are a lot better. Always come back to your work later. Never, some artists do, but never do your work in one sitting, because the longer you stare at something, the more it kind of looks how you expect it to look. That's why people joke that when they come back the next day, they think, oh, what have I made? It looks awful, because you're looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes. It's very important to study your reference against the piece you've made a few hours after, a few hours or even a few days after you have been drawing it because then you can kind of pinpoint what doesn't look right. You've really got to study the reference and then your piece to kind of 
get to grips with what doesn't really look or feel right. A great artist once told me that when dealing with proportions or trying to make more something more photorealistic, drawing a person or whatever, um, if it doesn't look right, it means that your eyes and your mind are kind of telling you how it should look not how it actually does. You really need discipline and patience and you need to retrain your mind and your eyes to, th to see things differently. You need to keep coming back to your work, you need to work on it little by little. So coming back to your work, practice, patience and discipline is the key to getting better at proportions, just practice. If you are new to art in general and you kind of want to get used to proportions, you can actually use um, grids. This is something that's been going on for hundreds of years. Basically where you divide your reference into a bunch of squares and then you do the exact same squares and measurements on your piece of paper and then see what fits in each kind of box. It's just, as I say, it's it's retraining your eyes to see things in a different way and that doesn't happen unless you are practicing. Next, you need to get the right tools, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to get the most expensive. A lot of people are under the impression that the more expensive tools you'll get, the better an artist you'll be. Some artists draw with a simple pencil, some artists draw with a ballpoint pen. It's not the tools that make the artist, it's the artist that makes the artist. You just need to get tools that work, not tools that are crazy expensive. For example, my biggest issue with this was that I was using a pencil with lead that was very, very thick. My first set of proper pencils were the Prismacolor Turquoise pencils, um, and you can buy these anywhere. They're, I think, like $12, $13 or so on Amazon. Um, you don't need to break the bank, but you're gonna wanna get a nice set of pencils that, if you look on the back of the tin, will give you a bunch of numbers, and those numbers designate how thin or thick or how intense the lead is. Now you need to try different mediums, definitely experiment, but find one that you kind of enjoy more than others and stick with it. Don't keep changing the, the medium you're using, don't go from pencils one day to watercolours the next to, to digital art. If you're continuously changing mediums, you're never going to master any of them. The thing is, when you become very good at one particular medium, it's kind of like a domino effect because you are able to take the skills you learn from one particular medium, say paint, into watercolours. Of course they're totally different, they work different ways, but the easier it is to transition into a different medium is my point. Okay, so when trying to blend your colours, I highly recommend painting landscapes or seascapes, especially like very, very flat, calm water. It's not true for everyone, but I found I actually started with landscapes. I did a lot of digital landscapes. That is how I really learned to blend. People always ask me how to shade and blend, especially with paint, um, and honestly the best advice I can give is to understand how shadows work, because the shadows and the highlights are what create the like, 3D effect and stop making it like a cartoon flat look. For example, if you think about it, if you have a light source above your head, um, the light is going to hit the features that stick out. For example, my nose sticks out, so I'm going to have lighter on my nose, and my, my cheekbones, for example. Always use a reference. Always, 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 always use a reference. You are never going to get better at anatomy or facial features or landscapes, seascapes, mountains, trees, cartoons, if you don't have a reference, you're trying to do it all from, from your mind. Often, if I can't find a picture of um, a particular angle of a face or a hand, on Google, I actually take a picture as stupid as it sounds. I have my phone is filled with pictures of myself. Uh, not of selfies, just me making like stupid faces because I'm trying to like get the hands right. You just, you need a reference and it's the only way you're ever gonna kind of get a grip on how things work. Now try not to get burned out. This is easier said than done, but if you're putting too much pressure on yourself or you're expecting too much from yourself, you are gonna get burned out. But don't give up, because if you give up when you're burned out, then you can have a period of time where you're not drawing at all. There was actually a year between these two, there was a whole year where I wasn't drawing anything because I kind of got burned out and I kind of lost my love for art. This can also happen if you expect too much of yourself, especially when you don't have much experience. Um, this is another thing that a lot of artists that are just starting out do. They expect to be able to create these huge, beautiful, amazing things. They're seeing these um, other artists make this stuff and thinking, right, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna create this. 
but they don't sort of have the experience or the fundamentals behind them. So they're kind of getting discouraged because they're expecting too much of themselves. This doesn't mean don't be confident in your work. Don't, you know, having confidence that you will be able to do something is absolutely perfect. When you're struggling for inspiration or you're trying to learn how to do particular things, find a few artists on say Instagram and copy their work. Do a few different art styles, but all with kind of the same subject. So if you're getting into uh, portraits of people, find a few artists that specialise in that. This doesn't mean to steal their work, claim it as your own or sell it. You've always got to, especially if you post it on social media, credit the original artist. That's very, very important. Artists, unless they're very snobby, take it as a compliment that you want to recreate their work. It's really nice. This actually happened to me recently. Someone on Instagram recreated my Pixar piece, which was really, really sweet. They tagged me in it. And they did a fantastic job. It's, it's a huge compliment when someone likes your work enough to want to recreate it. And copying a few different styles from a few different artists is going to teach you a few things because you'll see their techniques differ from one artist to another. Um, and that is kind of where style comes into play. Style is something that you will find without kind of realising it. Don't stress too much about, oh my gosh, I need, to, I need to have my own style to be distinct. Style takes time. It's something that is developed over a period of time. If there is something in particular that you struggle with, whether it's noses, mouths, hands, feet, legs, arms, mountains, draw them over and over again on a piece of paper. So I highly recommend getting a sketchbook, a brand new sketchbook solely for drawing particular things, like call it your experimental sketchbook. My experimental sketchbook is filled with faces, you can't really see that very well, me sort of practicing cartoon faces unreferenced. And then this page I've got eyes, if you can see that. Some more eyes and some more faces, some hair, some more faces and sort of experiment with Copic markers. Then I was experimenting with bodies and the thing about having a experimental sketchbook is that you don't go into it expecting to fill it up with amazing art. It's something that I kind of only recently have started to do because I always felt that when I had a sketchbook it was kind of intimidating. I felt that I needed to be filling it with amazing art and oh no, oh, this was great but then the next page, oh that's terrible, now I've ruined the sketchbook. Of course fill a sketchbook with bigger, better art but you really do need an experimental sketchbook. It's just, it's just about not going into a sketchbook expecting a lot from yourself. It's expecting that the work is going to be rough but you can just pick it up any time and sort of sketch around a little bit. And that's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any advice yourself, I would love to hear it and maybe I can share that in another video. I just want people to know that you should never be down on yourself or your art and don't let other people make you down on yourself or your art either because what do they know? What do they know? Ignore them. You know yourself best. You are your own, your own, you are your own worst critic. Um, I know that I am. But... Don't let yourself bully yourself down either because there's just there's no point. You're never going to get any better that way. So take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.